All right, I don't know what it is, mama. Got some Elvis Presley for you. Let it be me for Stephen P. Um, you said this is uplifting for kids. Is this the Stephen P, my Skype student? Probably not. But anyways, Elvis, man, what can you say? Legendary, icon, never to be duplicated. Elvis is great. Um, <clears throat> let me show you the first couple parts to this. It is in standard tuning. And um, so, yeah. Hey, quit honking. Trying to work. Okay, here's what we got. about where we're going to stop. What the heck is going on out there? Leave me alone. Okay, so uh, I ended up getting my daughter this guitar for Christmas. She went out and played today. She put the strap here on it. And if I wear it, it's actually going to choke me out. Like the Beatles. If I was doing a Beatles lesson, it'd, it'd work. But I'm going to come in and Johnny Cash style it. So we're going to start with uh, G major. The guitar is a little difficult to hear in this. Um, the piano is more uh, in your face, so I can tell by the piano chords what the guitar is doing. Okay, so G major, we got 3E, 2A, open D, open G, 3B, 3E. And there's also the possibility that it's 3 on the high E as well. So, um, the strum. That's kind of the vibe of what's going on. I'd emphasize a down strum or a down stroke on the top three strings. And you don't have to be like, you know, just aim for the thicker strings. Think of it that way. Don't go, you're going to do that next. So we have, and then go up, down, up. That's the pattern. That was two of them, right? Then we go to D major, and your third finger is already where it needs to be. Go two on the high E middle finger, two on the G index. Take your thumb, this is stuff that gets overlooked a lot um, with guitar players when they're trying to explain things, but take your thumb and just touch the low E. Don't push it down, just touch it to mute it. You got that much space between the strings, so th that's, that's the mindset behind that. Um, same concept, um, emphasize on the top three, even though it's a mute, it's fine. And do the same, uh, same strum one time, and then hit it once, and then we have this diminished chord. So we're going from G, G major to D major, and then we got it diminished here, and, but it's just in passing. In other words, I'll give you a little shortcut tip. Check it out. The gross tip of the day. If you have, coming off this D major, if you take this form, and move it up a string each, move it back a half step. What's a half step, you say? One fret. So we move it back and drop our pinky on 2E. That's probably the fastest way to jump to this chord. One, two, one, two, starting on the D string. Okay, so we have, but you're just gonna hit it once from the D string down. So. And then E minor, that's uh, 2A, 2D. And it's all six strings, same concept on the strum, two times through, double dots, repeat. And then we go to A minor, and um, if you can with your thumb, mute the low E there. The A minor does have an E note in it, but let's try to stick to the root being an A, and the E will be on the string one. Um, this will be a one time through, 
basically A D or A D G for your initial. So we have. Okay, so one time through, and then um, we're gonna do it's basically D seven, but we're gonna I, I call this a D seven suspended, but technically it's I'm sure a different name. Open D, open A for that matter, two G. 1B and 3 on the high E. Okay, and I would do it with that fingering because after we strum this once, I've got like a weird smear on the lens, I think. We'll strum it and then we'll go to the D7, which is fret 2 on the high E. Everything else stays the same. But all you'll be doing is two downs going, and that's the intro. So let's play the intro. You ready? A 1, a 2. And then vocals come in. Really pretty song, man. I like it. We're back to G uh, two times through. D major two times through. No, actually, it's the same as last time. One time through. And then strum it to the diminished. E minor, same, same way as last time. Two times through. And now it changes. We're going to go to a B minor bar chord. Bar the second fret, strings five through one. With that first finger, just touch the underneath of the low E string to mute it out. That's the reason. Muting is just as important as the notes of the chord. And, um, you know, that, it just is. If you hit a bad note, one bad note in a chord, by not muting it, it'll sound horrible. It ruins the whole thing. So it may as well mute it from the get-go. Then we got 4D, 4G, and 3B. We use this in the George Harrison one. Okay, um, two times through. Then we go to C major. I'm hearing a high G in it, so you would go 3A, 2D, open G, 1B, and then 3 on the high E string. It's, you know, C is usually played like this, but um, a C chord is a C, a E, and a G note, right? Or, well, we're just catching a high G instead of a high E in it. Okay, so go. So with your thumb, if you can't mute it, then try to touch it with your third finger. I do both. Then go to G major, but check this out. This is probably how this part's being done. Um, I couldn't find any actual, you know, live playing of being able to stare at this chord. But um, you'll go from that to a G major, get rid of your index, and just move your third finger up one and your middle finger up one. Keep everything else the same. Okay, and then... Um, Strum through on that. And then we go to the A minor, like before. And I think that was just a one time through. Let me, let me play it from where the vocals come in. One time through on that. And then we do the suspended thing again like we did last time. The D7 sus to the D7. Back to G major. You can do the four finger version or the three. One time through. And then D major two times down. See how the thumb comes up there? I don't think about those things. But you know since I've been teaching online over the past year and a half. Well, I was analyzing this stuff as a private teacher. I mean I've been doing it since 92. but. Um, I'm looking at myself as I'm playing this and it really makes you aware of things and if I don't explain it you guys will ask and you guys need to know it anyways. So coming off that G you got we did this right then another last little tip I want to point out if you don't have to lift a finger up in a chord don't do it it's more work but um your mind's going to tell you, no, it's more work to remember which finger to leave down. There's some truth to that as well. But the ultimate goal down the road, you'll end up doing it anyways. I almost guarantee it. Transitioning that third finger is the pivot point because it shares a note. It shares third fret on the B. So they, the G chord has a D in it and the D chord has a D in it. So that's the concept on that. And like I said, I do like to explain those things. If you don't know, you don't know. 
and you know you I guarantee you you turn on on YouTube or whatever or watch a band in concert on a DVD or whatever you'll start seeing that thumb come into play with stuff um, little things like well, I used to wonder why would someone want to play the G major with this layout it doesn't make sense it's it's physically harder um, it's more comfortable to just do this well if you're coming off of a C chord like like we're doing in the Elvis song you're actually set up for it it's actually makes it easier so it really depends on what's the next chord coming up or you know it could be the chord prior to but whatever chords around it then once you see that bigger picture it'll st it should click so anyways if you have questions let me know I promised you guys I do some more acoustic stuff so here it is for you and um, I needed to man it's been a while like most of my requests are well 75 percent I'd say are, are metal related so um, here you go if you have questions definitely let me know make sure to subscribe to my channel Tell your friends about Mike Gross, rockandguitarlessons.com. It's my website, obviously. And that's coming real soon. How long have you been hearing that, huh? But it really is. But I'm not saying nothing yet. A um, lot of cool things. Uh, stuff that I didn't even dream is coming. Seriously. So, um, And uh, it really does have a lot to do with you guys as well. I love teaching and I love music. It's To me, it's it's like breathing. It's life to me. So... But uh, to get the emails that I get daily from you guys um, saying how they're helping and, and this and that. Thank you, man. I really do appreciate it because I do try to put the effort in these. And no, there's not a lot of full songs on here. There are some. Um, but I do put in the effort to try and get these the way these bands are playing them for you. I like to go that extra mile. And if it's got my name on it, that's just how I look at it. Let's, yeah, it's someone else's song. I just threw my pick. But anyways, you follow what I'm saying. If you're interested in some lessons for guitar or bass from me or my beauteous wife, Jolene, she teaches people how to sing just like Elvis Presley or whatever you want to sing like. She's great. She's awesome. Um, but hit me up. Um, the lessons are $59 per hour, $34 per half hour. Uh, payments are made through my PayPal email. That's how most people handle it. Um, actually, right now. I think that's how everybody's doing it. Um, check out the CVT lessons. If you're not sure, I have a tutorial on that explaining what CVT lessons are. That's winding up being a, a really cool thing for you guys um, to fine-tune stuff, um, complete songs and all that. Um, so check that tutorial out I did on that. It says, what are CVT lessons? That's what I titled it. I had to shorthand some stuff. Um, yeah, I think I mentioned everything. My... Uh, uh, PayPal email, tbxpunk at aol.com. You can find all that stuff at rockandguitarlessons.com. Even all the info on Skype lessons. Um, that's the email you would also use if you'd like to donate to this channel. And by all means, if you can't, don't, man. Don't feel obligated to do it because I'll get to your request regardless. So don't, don't sweat that. We're all in this to get better as players. So I wish I had more time, you know, today, tomorrow, during the week to crank these out like I used to but a lot of things are going on behind the scenes and I obviously I will keep you guys updated but um, one thing I've learned in this year and a half is don't don't, don't really uh, give an absolute if you don't have it but a lot of cool things are cooking up in the kitchen okay guys so uh, go to rockandguitarlessons.com there's a temporary site up make sure to fill out the contact information it'll seriously take you under a minute probably some of you guys under 15 seconds but that'll keep you in the loop let you know what's going on with the website when the official launch date is and to just keep you in the loop period all right guys thanks a lot that's elvis presley with let it be me yeah is that right let it be yeah so anyway steven thanks man we'll talk to you guys soon see you later